Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. I've got some a, a potentially dangerous proposition uh, coming up for this lesson, which is I want to try to do two uh, items from Shalmerdine in one. Uh, at least 6.4, the complementary infinitive is short, uh, but I'm going to promise myself that I won't take more than 16 minutes to do both sections of this, so you can hold me to it, and uh, hopefully that will be both clear and short. That would be great, wouldn't that? We'll see how we do. All right, present active infinitive of thematic verbs is what we're looking at. And this is, uh, this is the to be or not to be. That would be a negative infinitive, but infinitives in English, we have a good sense of these from English classes. It's, it's the, the verb preceded by this to blank. To blank is good. Um, and, and in this sense, to blank becomes somewhat like a noun. This to blank is the subject of this sentence. We can't say, uh, I run is good, or run is good. No, we'd have to say to run is good, or potentially also in English, running is good. That's what we're doing, and that's why what this infinitive is, as many people will say, is it's a verbal noun. And of course, that's kind of a cop-out, right? It's saying, well, it's not a noun, it's not a verb, it's, a, it's kind of a noun that has verbal properties. So, okay, what, what does that mean? Let's break that down. How is an infinitive... Let's, you know I love charts on this thing, so let me draw a quick little chart here kind of pros and cons. How is an infinitive a noun? And then how is it verbal? And when I say verbal, I'm, I'm talking like a verb rather than just using words. The Latin word for word is verbum, obviously where we get verb from. So I often confuse these and go back and forth. You've probably noticed you might already be frustrated. But let's let's be specific here. This is verbal in the kind of grammatical sense, not just in a linguistic sense that it's, it's in speaking. So what, what do we know about nouns? Well, they have a case, they've got number, and they've got gender. And then what do we know about verbs? Well, they've got tense, and they've also got number, gender, or at least number, case number. Well, no, just number. Number, but they also have person. So they've got tense number person. They have mood. Um, these were the sorts of things. So if I were to say present, indicative, active, oh, they also have voice, that's the other thing. Passive, active, middle in Greek. This is indicative, subjunctive, whatever. So good, this is what nouns and verbs do. Which one of these actually apply to an infinitive. So it's not just the infinite. We're not getting pre-Socratic philosophy here, or philosophy. We're, we're, we're talking about the infinitive, something that is a... Well, what does that mean? In is not. Finite, or finite, is... Well, I got it given away. It's not finite. It's not limited. And if is just a noun suffix. We're saying it's a, a non-finite thing. But in some ways, it is finite. Infinitives in Greek, like Latin, do have a case. And that case, well, they somewhat have a case. It, it can be used nominatively. So that's basically where we're going to categorize it. Um, Greek infinitives could, well, they pair with articles. And then, so infinitive, well, they call this the articular infinitive. We're not going to get to that. I'm wasting your time talking about it right now, but it's really cool and Latin can't do it and Greek can. So in a way they do have a case. What we're going to be seeing right now is nominative, but they're more flexible than that. So let me put that in parenthesis. Do they have a number? Well, yes and no. It's kind of singular in the sense that the articles that you use with the, the infinitive are singular, um, but running I mean, is that a singular concept? We talk about runnings. I don't know. Cool runnings was a great movie, but that's not the point here. Uh, but it's somewhat singular. But then the genitive, this is the most important thing. 
it's grammatical, it's neuter. So it looks kind of like neuter. Neuter is the case, uh, or is the gender. So if we work with these articular infinitives, we're going to be seeing this. We're going to be seeing our neuter articles pairing with an infinitive. That's what the articular infinitive will look like. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself and eating valuable time. Verbal, so, so we can kind of check all these noun options, and that's why we call the infinitive a verbal noun, because it really is a noun. But how is it verbal? Does it have a tense? And we will discover, yes. That's why we're dealing with the present type of infinitive right now. Does it have a number? Well, I just kind of said yes, but it's not first, second, third person, and it's, it's, it's kind of just singular, and it doesn't have a person. So these, I'll just move that number over there and say, well, we don't really have number of person. This is how it's inf infinitive. This is how it's non-finite. Does it have a mood? Well, the infinitive itself is a sort of mood. So yes, but it's, um, it's not a subjunctive infinitive. It's not an optative or an indicative infinitive. It's simply the infinitive. So the mood distinctions that we normally will be making in Greek don't apply. And does it have a voice, active, passive, whatever? Yes. When I say it has a tense, though, we're not going to have all tenses. And then what tense means is going to be changing in the context of these infinitives. Um, we'll get to that when we get to that. But these are the features that it has. It has a tense a voice, and it kind of can work also, Shelmerdeen points out, with a subject and object. So it can act grammatically, syntactically, in verby ways. But then it does also have these noun principles, and then we also have that articular infinitive. Apparently we get to that in chapter 13. So sometime before the end of the semester, we'll be there. Another thing to point out, uh, I'll find a nice green. What it doesn't do, well, where, where it comes down on this noun-verb divide, is in terms of accent, it's a persistent accent. That's not like verbs. And what that means is the accent stays on the same syllable. Well, what syllable you'd say, and it's, um, the syllable is the, um, it's the second, well, no, that's, Second is the wrong, but second applies in some cases. It's the last syllable of the stem. All right, that's all great, but that means very little without an example. So let's go to our favorite Greek verb, right? Luo, it's short. We've all gotten used to it at this point. This is the finitive a finite form, right? This is not infinitive. This is first person, singular, it's active, it's present, it's indicative. That goes through our verbal list. It's tense, present, it's a uh, number, singular, first person, indicative mood, active voice, great. The stem, as we've learned for this, is simply the lu. The O is the personal ending. So to build the infinitive, we're going to take that stem. So we're going to keep Lou. And then in the kind of historical linguistics, which I'm going to do in a nice magenta, we had an epsilon here. And then we had, so this is our thematic vowel. And then the ending was epsilon nu. And the rule for Greek, when you add an epsilon onto an epsilon, tends to be A. We saw this with echo when we wanted to put a past indicative augment on it. It became ache. And the personal ending changed too, but, but that was the translation that we had. Epsilon plus epsilon equals this diphthong. So that's what we're going to have here. So, well, let me write that a little bit higher, just so we know what's happening, but then get back to the bright white for the actual word itself. And then we have luane. And then I was saying the accent is on the last syllable of the stem. Well, we only have one syllable here. Luane is 
our present active infinitive. Great. But, so now we can do this with anything. We want to do it with echo, which we just had. Echane. Hey, it wasn't that nice. Let's do something that's a little bit longer. These were both monosyllabic. So, um, pi dewane. Lots of, oh, not pi, pi dewane. Uh, uh, pi dewane. Again, accent on the last bit of the stem. If I go back with the kind of blue, we can isolate the stems in all cases. Well, in all examples. No case here, we're talking verbs. Good, this is what's going on. This isn't too bad, is it? So even though it's verbal, it's really a noun and we have persistent accent. What we can note right here is that these ain endings are always long, so we're always going to be getting acute accent here. When we get to other infinitives later on, their endings might not necessarily be long, they might be short, so in those cases we might need to look out for circumflexes. But we don't have that right now. We're home free. We're just dealing with the regular infinitive. Now let's get to 6.4 right on time and talk about complementary use of the infinitive. And remember, this is compli, not, not I, mentory. This isn't, oh, uh, you look really good in that outfit complementary. This is completes the picture. That's the completion. So there are certain verbs in Greek just as in English, that really invite, they invite the, uh, the infinitive over for dinner. So one of those, uh, which we might as well learn now, I've introduced it in physical class already, is Othello. Uh, not the uh, more of the Shakespeare play, uh, which was Othello. This is Othello, um, and this means um, I wish, I desire, and that's not in a sexual way, that's just a kind of choose, opt, wish, um, or, or simply I want. So in English, we're used to saying I want, well, you could say I want candy or something. You could want a direct object, but you could also say I want to, <laughs> let's, uh, I want to send the goddess because you're Greek, uh, and let's say gifts, right? We're always sending the goddess gifts. So I want to send the goddess gifts, and this is a nice direct translation. We're going to use Othello, I want, and then to send, we're going to use an infinitive, and then indirect object in the dative for the goddess, and then direct object, accusative gifts, uh, that's what we've got. So let's let's do this. Oh, we got back to our old lesson here. We're moving. All right, good. So I want Athelo to send. So pempe or pempo. Sorry, I forgot the mu. Pempo is our verb. I send. So the stem is simply pemp. And we know that the accent's going to be there, and it's going to have to be an acute, so we can just leave it. And then add that ain, which, remember, used to be an epsilon, epsilon nu. But you don't really need to know that. Just know that that's how it looks, and you're going to get through just fine. Greeks didn't know what had happened. They just knew how to speak what was current. So good. Othello, pempane, to the goddess. Te, thea color change, but I don't have a problem with that. And then gifts. Ta, Dora. And this ta is probably optional. It's not the gifts, uh, but, but maybe we already mentioned those gifts. Maybe we're treating gifts as a class. I'm going to say you're going to want to leave it out. But nice to know that it is neuter and it agrees with the Dora. So I want to send to the goddess gifts. You could also say gifts to the goddess. We've got options here. So we have Othello, where this happens. The other place that we'll get some of this is on verbs of ordering. So we have one verb for ordering that we're learning this chapter. No surprise, because we're also learning uh, this construction, kleo, I order. And then we also already had patho, 
I persuade, sorry, again, I lost my mouse, Kaleo and Patho. So I, and then these both take the infinitive. Let me find you good other color for translation, order, and persuade. All right, I've got 35 seconds to wrap up. So what are infinitives? They're verbal nouns. Well, what did that mean? They had some properties, they had all properties of a noun, they had some properties of a verb, namely tense and voice, and they do act as verbs. They might take a subject and object. They're formed historically by epsilon, the thematic vowel, plus epsilon nu, the ending, but now we just see ain, and they work with these complementary verbs that literally invite them. That's the complement. Just a couple seconds over, next time I'll get it. Take care. See you then.